Hello, I'm Max Wolf, aka Minimax here, and today we're going to have some fun with Yelp data using fun tools such as R and ggplot2. The Yelp dataset challenge is consists of a publicly released dataset by Yelp where anyone, well preferably student, students, can play with Yelp data and then submit their findings for potential prizes. And it's I'm, I previously used this data set in a blog post last year, and I had a lot of fun playing around with it, and I found some cool an an analysis analyses. So maybe if I look at the data set again a year later, we might be able to find something even more interesting and fun. Over here on the left, I have a fresh R console, which is what you would normally see when you install R on Mac OS X. And over here, I have CSV files of two of the release datasets from the latest challenge. Norm the datasets aren't provided as CSV files. I had to run a Python script to get into the format. And I will upload those Python scripts with the, with the video as well. Unfortunately, I can't re re provide raw data as that's against their terms. So let's go play around with R. One of the first things we want to do is, with R is load a couple packages, at, which I've already installed. For example, we want to load the reader package, which is necessary for reading CSV files at a fast pace. Another package we want to load is the dplyr package, which allows for a couple a couple very important data manipulation techniques, which will be very important for you for later. And lastly, we can load dplot. We can load. Got it. Never mind. We can load ggplot too. So let's load this Yelp reviews data set and see what happens. First, um. It's actually pretty simple to do. We'll, I'll store the data in a data frame called DF reviews and use the read CSV function from the read reader package. Then it shall load the data. You can see it's about 126 megabytes, so it's a lot of data. But how many reviews are in this data frame? Use the base and row function. It's 1.5 million, which matches the, their 1.6 million pretty closely, so that's a good sanity check. But what what type of data is within this data frame that has already been pre-processed? Well, since we since we loaded dplyr ahead of time, the data frame is a is a tbldf, which it comes with the dplyr package, and when you print a d uh, when when you print a df reviews package it will give you a more informative print, and so you should always wrap your data frames within a tbldf. And printing it looks like this. See all, all the, see the dimensions of the data frame, a few of the columns, and a few, a few rows from the data. The user ID is the encrypted user ID of the person who made the review. Business is encrypted for the business. You can see that these top 10 are all for the same business. The date is the data review. Stars is the number of stars the rev reviewer gave from one to five. Review length is a, is a metric I added, which counts approximately the number of words within the review. Positive words uses a sentiment analysis technique, which I used in my blog post to attempt to, quant attempt to use sentiment analysis in a scalable way for over 1.6 million reviews without taking days upon days. For positive words, it's, um, what I do is I compare each review to, a, I tokenize each word and then compare each word in the review to a list of known positive words and, do, and count how many of those are in there. And I do the same for negative words and net sentiment is just po positive words minus negative words as a quick aggregate metric. So what is the distribution of the, of the data? A quick way to do it is to run a, sum a summary of the data frame. 
And if you do that, it'll give you the five number summary plus the mean for each applicable column. For stars, um, the mean is, a four, is four stars and the me median is, well, rather the mean is 3.7 stars, which you might expect there's a little bit of skew there. Review length, it's about 18 words, means 24 words. Uh, positive words between like six and seven. Me negative words is much fewer, which is sh shouldn't be too surprising. Net sentiment is just, it, mathematically it should be re related to these terms. So that's not too surprising. But how can we visualize these metrics? But since we loaded ggplot2 already, we can run a qplot on, on, the, on, I guess, a, a certain column, like stars, for example. First, we specify the, the data, where, where the data is, which is in the DF reviews data frame, and the, and the variable of interest, which is stars. And there's an extremely, extremely basic visualization, which is a histogram of stars. You can see, you can see that most of the majority are four, most are five actually, which is interesting. And they're very, well, re there are re relatively very few one to two stars relative to four to five star reviews. That, and we can do that for all the other columns as well. So, so let's try the review, review length. As you might expect, it, it's, it's very skewed, it decays very quickly. And, sin, and po since positive words is strongly correlated with the view length, you'd probably have the same look as that visualization. And not, no surprise there. But so what fun things can we do? Maybe perhaps there is a correlation between stars and positive words. Um, we can also we can just do a Q plot for that too, and just call both variables. And since we provide two variables to Q plot, it will produce a scatter plot as opposed to a histogram. Or not. Oh, type. Silly typo. However, it does have to plot 1.6 million views, and that might take a little bit of time. Maybe... This maybe was not a good idea. I may have to edit this out in post. Actually worked eventually and it, unfortunately it's not helpful because there, there's no alpha variation towards the number of stars but unfortunately I'm hesitant to plot that straight again up because it might take a decent amount of time so we'll go back to that later and but another consideration might be to normalize the positive words. Since positive words is the correlate with the view length, we should probably d divide divide positive words by view length to normalize that metric. And dplyr has a very cool way of allowing the user to add columns, it's, which is which is the mutate function. 
and mutate it allows you to add uh, add or change columns in line. So we, to mutate, we can create a pause norm column, which is just pause the number of positive words divided by the review length. And if we check the data frame again, see we have a pause norm here. And we also can do the same for ne uh, neg norm too. Since that was not particularly helpful, let's try playing around with the business's data and loading that into R. Again, using read CSV. And how many businesses are in this data set? Only 61,000, which is pretty compact for a data set. And again, let's do another set. Let's see what's let's see what's in the data. And see, we have the name of the business itself, the business ID, which is in, which is interesting compared to we have the business IDs here. And hey, look, this begins with VCN, and this begins with VCN. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything interesting we can do there. And along with that, we have a few other meta variables such as the city. If you look back at the original Yelp data set, this data is only from a certain number of cities. We have the state, just in case. We have categories, which is a that's a little bit more of a complicated issue. I'll show you why. In dplyr, you can select you select to select a specific column. And the issue of categories is that there can be any number of categories for a given for a given business, and so it, data is slightly denormalized, and as a result, it's a little difficult to, to perform analysis on it. It's possible, but I've done I've done before. It took a couple of hours to get everything into the right spot. And along that we have stars, which is the app, the true star rating for, for the business. It can be in half star increments too. And the review count, which is the true number of reviews. And not all reviews in here are going are in here. There's only a subset of everything, but there are, is some overlap, and it's not all, going to be all inclusive, unfortunately. So what, let's try some aggregation with dplyr. Why not aggregate on city? But to do that first, we need to merge the two data sets. And as I sh mentioned earlier, it's easy to do if we merge on the business ID. dplyr has a very easy way to merge. And that makes things very fun. Again, we use reviews. And the keyword is left join. As in SQL, you have your joins, you have your inner join, you have your left join, you have your right join. It's the same principle in dplyr. And we'll left join on the business's data frame. And since they both have business ID, it's it'll be very, it'll be smart about that and do automatically join on that. Or will it? I uh, was not expecting to join on stars. All right, I was not expecting it to join on the stars column, which in retrospect, I probably should have expected that. So just in case I redid the analysis, I reloaded the review state frame, re-added the columns, and now I'll do the merge correctly, in which we explicitly state the by column. And now everything should be perfect. So if we, in which case we specifically have stars X and stars Y. That's valid. The stars X comes from the left data frame, which is 
what we want and the, the reviews data frame what stars wise the stars for the businesses of course which correspond to the business ID there it's that's a, it was a good idea that we went back to the beginning now we can have some fun with making making the aggregation on city and dplyr makes that pretty easy and we will store the results in a new data frame Do that real we'll, what we have to, we have to aggregate as you would in SQL or languages like that. We'll group we'll group we'll group by city. And then if you do do an, if you do if you aggregate then you can do, use the summarize function in dplyr to do mathematical interpretations of it. For example, the summarize. We'll just for now just do stars. Do average stars, rather. And that happens near instantaneously. Now, what is the result? Uh, what? That's not good. Apparently, the cities are not particularly reliable. Thanks, Yelp. Uh, there's a few more things we can do. For for one, we can go back here and we should probably include a count with the average. Maybe that'll explain why we have some ir irregularities, so to speak. Dplyr has a shortcut for a count, which is the end function. That makes life a lot easier. And that makes more sense. You can see some have only a few entries, which again, I'm surprised it's happening because Yelp's it explicitly says the cities, so you'd expect the cities to correspond specifically, but it does not. There is a way to fix this. We can over over sort by count and sort by count descending, which is use the arrange function in dplyr. And we'll arrange descending count. There we go. That makes significantly more sense. We have Las Vegas as in most by significantly, it's about a thir about a third, wow. And Phoenix with an another large chunk. But from the top here, it doesn't appear to differ significantly. Although, I have a feeling that there may be some data fidelity issues, since we're missing a lot of the cities, um, that, since th they have irregular names. Although, when you look at this particular map, you can see that there is no state overlap between any of the cities. Therefore, it might be better if we change it to aggregate by state. To do that, you just change a single variable. And maybe the data frame name too for consistency. This is much more clear. We have Nevada, we have Arizona, where Phoenix is, we have North Carolina, we have Pennsylvania, where Pittsburgh is, and from the looks of it, the average star rating doesn't vary that much, unfortunately. But it, maybe this serves as a good starting point for a data visualization, and so you can see how the inner workings of our work, and it's actually pretty cool. As a good start, why not try graphing a bar chart of state versus average stars to get a good visualization feel. And to do that, we can now play with ggplot2. Setting it up is pretty simple, although I will warn you in advance it will require a significant amount of tweaking. And state the data frame, the data frame we're using, which is df states. And now we can define the aesthetics. The x axis stack will be the state, and the y axis will be the stars. Although that's a column chart, but well, that, that's what we want at the moment, and I'll explain why later.
Although, um, theoretically, in G this is actually on ggplot2 at 2.0.0. And as a result, that implements a new feature in ggplot2 where you can plot a data frame that's empty. Let's see what happens if we do that. Indeed, it does. It set the it organized things by state and organized things by stars. Unfortunately, the states are not very pretty, but we'll be able to fix that. One, the, we'll need to flip it, flip state over here, and, and flip state for the y-axis and average stars on the x-axis, and that's pretty easy to do. And first we should tell ggplot2 that we want a bar chart. That is the geom bar. And, oh, okay, I know what happened here. We need to set stat equals identity. Otherwise I'll try to plot a histogram and that's why it's getting confused. Do that, we just tell in the geom bar aesthetic. And now we should be able to plot with impunity. There we go. And well, there's one that's actually pretty low. That's interesting, but there's a little bit of variation and it might be a little, more, more can do with this. First first thing to do is do the flip. That's easy, easily done with um, chord flip, which flips the coordinates as you'd expect. There you go. And now we have the variable. Now we have the, we have what we want. Although the order is not the greatest. What, the order is technically alphabetical order. It goes from A, B, C, and so on and so forth, from the down up. And the order we want is descending order from largest stars to smallest stars. And that requires an interesting trick. And to do that, we, we need to mutate the state column. And we want to mutate it to the fact, um, change. What's happening here is internally, this data is represented as a factor. And we want, and the ordering of the factor is the by default alphabetical. So we want to change the ordering to be this descending by count. That's easy enough to do. Change the levels. Levels are correct, so we can just leave them as is. But the levels. Uh, what? Doesn't make sense. Let's try that again. So I figured out the problem, I think. So I took at the last few elements of the re of the data frame and there are a few repeated star ratings and that's why things are getting very screwy. Uh, but really, we shouldn't even be looking at these and such. So we might add, I'll add a filter to it as well. To the creating statement. And to do that, we just use the filter command and, and just filter using any inequality. So since it looks like the breaking point is about 2000, we'll just count. 2000. Why not? I misspoke earlier when I said I sh we should be factoring on count. We should be factoring on the average stars instead. So things will be in correct order. And not only sh we should be factoring on average stars, but we should also be reversing the order because this is the order it goes in, but the order we want is this order. That's still easy to do. Although last time I said something was easy to do, something went horribly wrong. But Whatever. It get, happens what happens.
But first, we, um, as I mentioned, we should probably change the sorting order to, av to the average stars. And that, then we can add the factor. Now we can call the function again to make sure everything's all hunky-dory. Things are not hunky-dory. So apparently I'm a complete idiot and the problem was very easy to solve. What we wanted was just to sort the data frame by average stars ascending, which is what we wanted, and then mutate the state column so that the order is the order is in the correct order, but the internal representation must be in the reverse order. So you, you use the ref function on the state, and that should be it. And then if we just rerun rerun this plot, if I remember how to plot it again, everything should be in the correct order. This took a lot of trial and error, mostly error. There we go. There we go. Now everything looks good and everything's in the correct order, which is great. But how about we add the text representation of the charts? That's easy to do with Geon text. And then we can just use the text to say what the average stars are. I think we'll actually do that automatically. I don't think we need to actually declare that. Although we do need to adjust it since it'll be positioned horizontally right here for each one. Just have to shift it to the left a bit. We do that with horizontal justification. And we'll see what happens there. I am giving up on saying anything is easy anymore. But this is a simple fix. It is not an easy fix, it is a simple fix. But while we're here, let's round it to the to, to two decimal places. And I was apparently wrong with the H direction. It should be positive one instead of negative one. You can see there's a missing three here, and that's generally not good. Additionally, the text should be white. <laughs> Rather, white should be in quotes, so to speak. There we go. Now we have a good, good visual representation of where the data lies. And it's zero centered too. And there is a way to fix the 3.7, but that's for another. At the rather fix 3.7, there's 3.70 for cons consistency, but that's for another video. At this point, you can try applying a theme. And in this case, we'll copy the theme used in my previous ggplot tutorial. Which I just find by Google because I'm pretty lazy. And this is um, this is from my ggplot tutorial, which is also a step-by-step -step teaching tool. But in it here, I have a example theme, which is pretty helpful and gets and is does it. and it's pretty flexible too. It's based on the 538 theme, which I think they're trying to phase out of a little bit. 
Although, as a default theme, it makes life a lot easier. It, the function is named FTE theme, so all you have to do is add it to this plot function. Okay, um, now we need to load another library, which is normally included with ggplot2, but I guess it didn't load. The library is our color brewer. And now, now it should work. Drum roll. There. Now it's all pretty. Although it's gray, it's neutral, the text is kind of big. We'll fix that. We can fix that right now by changing the adjust, the adjust, make in a little more, then change the size to hopefully be smaller. This is a guess. I would, it is a bad guess. Okay, that, that'll work. Other than that, missing 3.70 3 is kind of disappointing. I'll say, say how to fix that. But now we can change the labels. That's easy to do with the labs command in ggplot2. The, the x-axis is average star, so... Average st star rating. y-axis is state, although technically some are Br British and Canadian provinces, but whatever. And then the title is Average Yelp View Star Ratings by state. Although technically it's not by state, it's by a city area in a state, but you, that's what the accompanying post would detail if you were doing this in publication. Uh, and then we hit the other issue I was concerned about. Because we're flipping the axis here, we have to flip the label names, the label axes. So this has to be on Y, it has to be an X. And that's... Another caveat I keep hitting, and it's very annoying, but what can you do? And again, average average pound rating is not good. Not, not doing hashtagging, hashtag rating. Average for four reviews in state, since we have space. It's proper capitalization because we're good about presentation. And since we're here, why not do things a little more fancy? Let's go back to our original data frame. Our original data frame come, and then we can add a conference intervals for each of these bars and get really fancy. First, let's get let's find back to the original state code. And to fix that, we will add a new column. A new column, which is the standard error for the mean. And standard error mean is the is the mean. Rather, rather no, no, it's not. It's the standard deviation. by the square root of the number of, by, by the square root of the count, rather. Ha! <sighs> I'm being very typo-y today. Okay, look at the data. See, there's a lot of room. 
it's, it's actually, since it's, it's so, it counts so high, the standard of the mean is pretty secure. Then rerun the back factoring code. Find it. Then we should be good to go. So back to the plot code. Now we can add another aesthetic, which is... Well, the way I... You can implement it in a number of ways, but the way I like to implement it is just... Playing around with the crossbar geom. And... Uh, the, the minimum... With the geom, you said minimum and maximum, although... Since we're flipping the ax axes, this could be more complicated. Let's see what happens. And there's a high probability I'll get yelled at. The X min for the crossbar will be will be the will be the mean minus 1.96 times the standard the standard deviation of the mean, which is which will help create a 95% confidence interval. Although this kind of violates some of the assumptions of normality necessary for confidence interval, but we'll just go with it for now. And then y min, whether x max, no, not x max is the inverse, plus 1.96 times se mean. Let's see if we can get all that. Maybe what I have to do is flip to the y-axis. That did it? Sorta. See, it's trying, although the apparently it needs refinement with the design. And I figured out what the problem is. Instead of crossbar, it needs to be error bar. Should be that simple. There we go. Now we can see the range of, of confidence for each value. And since the standard error is so low for the mean, we can feel pretty confident about these values. Although if we want to determine if they're statistically different from each other, we'll need to run larger tests, which unfortunately is outside the scope of these. But if you look at look at the analysis, the well, let's compare it to the the cities from the original from the original data set challenge. We have EDH, which I assume corresponds to Ed Edinburgh, and Canada, um, Quebec is Montreal, of course. And then we have Arizona, Pennsylvania. So it's interesting that there's a slight edge between from non-American countries in terms of review scores. But unfortunately, in order to make that assertion more solid, we, we need more data, which unfortunately Yelp does not make easy to get outside of this data set challenge. So now the last step is to save this chart into a form we can publish online. And to do that, we, ha we, ha we use the ggsave tool. And we GG save the plot. You can give it a name. My lovely GG plot two chart. That PNG. You can give it any file format name, and it'll save in the correct one. You can do JPEG, SVG, whatever you want. The DPI will set to 300, so it's print quality. And what I like to do is four by three. So width equals four, height equals three. Wait, what? All right, once again, I'm especially dumb. I got the parameters in the wrong order. It should be file name, then the plot, which doesn't make much sense to me, but whatever. And there we go. I've stored the plot in the R projects folder, and now I can open the file. And there you have it, a pretty high resolution chart, which has error bars, it has labels, it has axes, it has theming, 
and that's a pretty good start. And what I, whenever I post charts online, I usually spend more time sprucing it up, adding more color, making it look especially pretty. But this is a pretty good start for a chart. I hope this little tutorial was helpful for you letting data analysts at home. And if you have any comments on the video, aside from the fact that I messed up half the time, please let me know and I'll see if I can improve that in future videos. Bye.